Is a vasectomy a reversible form of birth control? Can you consider them temporary? How easy are they to reverse? We're gonna talk about that today. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, a board certified OBGYN. And yes, today I'm talking about vasectomies. Now you might be thinking, why is an OBGYN talking about a procedure that doesn't happen to her patients? And I discuss it because it's a form of birth control that's really important to cover. And even if my patients aren't the ones having the procedure done, it's for sure an option, a great option of birth control for people interested. And so I need to be able to counsel appropriately. I never thought that I would be talking about whether or not vasectomies are temporary or reversible, but once again, there's some crazy stuff going around social media that is not accurate and I wanted to address it here. So this all started when my friend, my OBGYN sister from another mister, Dr. Stacy T or Dr. Stacy Tanaway was telling me how she was getting so many messages on TikTok about people saying, vasectomies are temporary. They're completely reversible. Why don't you talk about this more? Did you say temporary vasectomy? Whoa, 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 whoa. And as we're both OBGYNs, we were like, where is this coming from? And so this is an example of one TikTok that got 2 million views that is talking about how vasectomies are totally temporary or reversible and that more people should be using them for birth control because then the person with the uterus does not have to take birth control and deal with any side effects. So this is one of them. You can see it right there, 2 million views. And so let's play that so you can get an understanding of the flavor of what's going around and going a wee bit viral. Okay. Here we go. 100% have taken a form of it. Why am I passionate about this topic as a gay man, you might ask? Because women are my friends. And every close relationship in my life with a woman has brought up this topic of birth control. And every single one has said that it has been an absolute nightmare. So I did some digging for you. Did you know vasectomies are one of the most effective forms of birth control? That has nothing to do with the woman because first of all, it's not even their responsibility. It doesn't True. affect a man's hormones. It doesn't True. give them blood clots. It True. doesn't make them nauseous. They True. heal within almost three days, honey. They are almost 100% reversible. They they don't even have to go under for anesthesia. The surgery is almost 15 minutes, give or take. I will be getting one and showing you, Queen, how fucking easy it is because your body deserves better. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. So we need to discuss that because when you hear that, you think, yeah, totally, they're reversible. And the point of this, this YouTube is not hate on that person whatsoever. He is far from the only one who is um, saying these sorts of things. And so I thought, let's debunk it. So first, what is a vasectomy? In case you're not aware, it is when the vas deferens, which you can see right here, are either clipped or sealed or sutured. And so they are interrupted. And so sperm cannot go through them and get into the semen and out through the ejaculate. And so when a person with a penis has ejaculation or ejaculates, there's no sperm in their semen. And so they can't get their partner pregnant. And that TikTok was totally right. They are very easy to do. You do them in the office, you do them in a few minutes, you use local anesthesia, the person getting it doesn't have to be put to sleep. It's very quick. And when you compare it to other forms of birth control that are like the vasectomy, like a tubal ligation or getting your tubes tied in a person with a uterus, much easier, quicker, faster, less expensive, doesn't require general anesthesia. Totally true, I'm all on board for that. And when we talk about effectiveness, vasectomies are amazingly effective. There's about a 0.15% failure rate per year as composed to a 0.5% failure rate for a tubal ligation. It's a minuscule difference, but yes, vasectomies are more effective, but they're both totally great options. You do need to keep in mind that they're not effective right away. It takes a few months for the sperm to clear out of the ejaculate fluid. And so you do need a semen analysis to make sure that there's no sperm left before you start using it as a form of birth control. Okay, but here's what we need to discuss. Are they reversible? And here are the facts about vasectomies and reversal. So it's true that six to 10% of patients who have a vasectomy done change their mind and want to have a reversal and they go ahead and they attempt that. What you'll see here is a reason that some people think, oh yeah, they're totally reversible. I mean, this is the Mayo Clinic. That's great information. They say 30 to 90% of vasectomies can be reversed. And you see that and you think, well, that's cool. That is not the whole story. So when it comes to reversal success, it has to do with how long since you've had the procedure done. And the longer it's been since you've had your vasectomy, the less likely it is able to be reversed. So here's the thing, vasectomies, simple procedures. Reversals, not so much. These are longer surgeries and they require specialized surgeons to do this procedure. I mean, think about it. You're trying to put together these two tiny little tubes. You're trying to connect their blood supply back. It requires a specialized surgeon who's trained in this. And the more that they've done, the more likely the chances that your reversal will be successful. And while vasectomies are very often covered by insurance, unfortunately, vasectomy reversals are not. And as I've said, these are more complicated and longer surgeries. And so that 
can become thousands and thousands of dollars very quickly. Here's the other thing. Many people suggest that before you do a vasectomy reversal, that you take some sperm and you freeze it ahead of time just in case it's not successful. Yes, that costs money. And let's say that if your vasectomy reversal is not successful and either you have frozen sperm or you then decide to use frozen sperm, it's not just that you just automatically your partner gets pregnant. Your partner has to go through fertility treatments, which are again, often not covered by insurance, which is a whole other issue in this country, but not covered by insurance, tens of thousands of dollars in expense in terms of diagnostic tests and surgeries and procedures like in vitro fertilization or intrauterine insemination. So if you think, well, up to 90% are reversible, that's really cool. And if not, only 10% of people need to do other stuff. We're talking still a pretty high failure rate when you think of medical things. You know, 10% failure is not a great failure rate and an expensive one, which can add up into tens of thousands of dollars and IVF and these sorts of treatments are not successful the first time, so you may need to do multiple rounds, and you can be into hundreds of thousands of dollars to have a successful pregnancy if you hadn't had that vasectomy done. Let's talk about what if the vasectomy reversal is successful. That's awesome, but it can take up to a year for sperm to reappear in that fluid, and so if you're fine with waiting, that's fine, but if you are worried about wanting to conceive right away, or you're worried about age if your partner is getting older, and the quality and quantity of her eggs and her fertility, you may not want have to wait a full year in order to be successful in starting to try. So this idea that vasectomies are just reversal and temporary is not telling you the whole story. And when people say, well, I've seen on websites from the Cleveland Clinic and from Mayo Clinic that the success rate is really awesome, it is so much more than that. And I think what people are really getting at here is why does birth control just lay on the shoulders of women and people with a uterus? And I agree, I completely agree. Birth control is not for everybody and I don't want it to have to be just relying on us. But that's where we are currently in terms of the majority of birth controls being for people with a uterus, but research is ongoing. And in the meantime, if you're somebody who wants a good form of birth control, there are great options out there like IUDs, including a non-hormonal one. There are other methods if you don't wanna be exposed to hormones, such as condoms and spermicide, diaphragms, fertility awareness, that kind of thing. Truly at the end of the day, I think vasectomies are great. And I think more people who have a penis who want permanent birth control need to step up and consider a vasectomy, but in no way, shape or form is this something that should be temporary and done on a whim. Just like a tubal ligation in somebody with a uterus, happy to do them, if you are 110% sure that you were done having children. So while I love the increased awareness of vasectomies, the fact that there is this idea of a temporary vasectomy is not true and you really should not be putting all your eggs in one basket with a vasectomy. If you're sure you're done having kids or you're sure that you never wanna have kids, go ahead and do it, my friend. But please don't do it because you think this is something that in a year or two, if you change your mind, you can walk in and do that easily. It's expensive, it doesn't always work, there's lots of risks, and it's really unnecessary when we have other forms of birth control. Let's keep the conversation going. Let me know if you've got any questions or concerns and drop them in the comments. I've got tons of good references and resources in my show notes, as always. And if you like this kind of content, please go ahead, subscribe and turn on the bell so I can keep giving you this kind of content. I love chatting with you guys here and on my TikTok and Instagram. So go ahead and follow me there at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln and let me know what your thoughts are. Have a great day.